Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to the History AI Podcast, where we dive into the events and personalities that shaped our past. I'm Chuck, and with me as always is my co-host Marco. Hey everyone! We've got a fascinating episode for you today. We're going to explore Operation Bodenplatte, a major German Luftwaffe operation during World War II. Buckle up, because this one's a roller coaster. That's right, Marco. Before we dive in, let's set the scene. It's late 1944, and the world is in the throes of World War II. The Allies have landed in Normandy, and they're pushing the Germans back through France. On the Eastern Front, the Soviets are advancing steadily towards Germany. Yeah, and the Germans are feeling the pressure. They're desperate to turn the tide, and that's where Operation Bodenplatt comes into play. But first, let's take a quick look at what led to this point in the war. To truly understand Operation Bodenplatt, we need to go back to the roots of World War II. The war officially began on September 1, 1939, when Germany, under Adolf Hitler's leadership, invaded Poland. This aggressive move prompted Britain and France to declare war on Germany, marking the start of a conflict that would engulf the entire world. Over the next few years, the Axis powers, which included Germany, Italy, and Japan, expanded their territories dramatically. Germany's blitzkrieg tactics a lightning-fast attacks combining air power, artillery, and ground troops led to the rapid conquest of much of Europe. By 1941, the Axis controlled vast regions from Western Europe to North Africa and had even reached the gates of Moscow. But the tide began to turn in 1942. The United States entered the war after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The combined industrial and military might of the Allies began to shift the balance. The pivotal battles of Midway in the Pacific and Stalingrad on the Eastern Front in 1942-1943 were significant turning points. Fast forward to 1944, and the Allies had launched a major offensive in Western Europe. On June 6, 1944, known as D-Day, Allied forces landed on the beaches of Normandy, France. This massive invasion, Operation Overlord, was a logistical masterpiece and marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. As the Allies broke out from Normandy, they liberated Paris in August 1944 and continued their advance toward Germany. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, the Soviet Union, under Joseph Stalin's leadership, was pushing back German forces with brutal efficiency. The Red Army's victories in places like Korsk and Operation Bagration devastated the German war machine. By late 1944, Germany was fighting a desperate defensive war on multiple fronts. Hitler and his high command were looking for any opportunity to reverse their fortunes. This is the context in which Operation Bodenplatt was conceived. The Germans needed to regain control of the skies over the Western Front to support their ground forces during the Ardennes Offensive, better known as the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge itself was Hitler's last major offensive in the West. Launched in December 1944, it aimed to split the Allied lines capture the vital port of Antwerp, and encircle and destroy four Allied armies. Despite initial successes, the offensive stalled, and the Allies began to counterattack. As the situation became increasingly dire, the Luftwaffe High Command decided on a bold and risky plan to strike at the heart of the Allied air power in Western Europe. This plan was Operation Bodenplatt, an all-out assault intended to cripple the Allied air forces and give the German ground troops a fighting chance. The stakes couldn't have been higher. The outcome of this operation would not only influence the immediate battles in the West but also have far-reaching consequences for the overall war effort. And with that, let's delve into the details of Operation Bodenplatt, starting with its objectives and the key players involved. Operation Bodenplatt, or Base Plate in English, was launched on January 1, 1945. The objective was simple but ambitious, cripple the Allied air forces in the Low Countries, particularly their aircraft and airfields. This operation was seen as a last-ditch effort by the Luftwaffe to regain air superiority and support the German ground forces engaged in the Battle of the Bulge. The Germans had several specific goals for Operation Bodenplatt. First and foremost, they aimed to destroy as many Allied aircraft on the ground as possible. By doing so, they hoped to reduce the Allies' ability to conduct reconnaissance, 
close air support, and bombing missions. This would in turn alleviate pressure on the German ground forces and potentially allow them to regain the initiative on the Western Front. To achieve these goals, the operation was meticulously planned by the Luftwaffe High Command. The planning involved detailed reconnaissance of Allied airfields, careful coordination of various fighter and bomber units, and strict secrecy to ensure the element of surprise. The operation was scheduled for New Year's Day to catch the Allies off guard, as it was believed that many pilots and ground crews would be celebrating and less vigilant. The leadership behind Operation Bodenplatt was a mix of experienced Luftwaffe officers who had seen significant action throughout the war. General der Jagdflieger Adolf Galland, one of Germany's top fighter aces and the general of fighters, was instrumental in planning the operation. He was responsible for overseeing the coordination of the various fighter units involved in the attack. Another key figure was General Oberst Otto Deslock, the commander of Luftflot 3, the Luftwaffe's air fleet responsible for operations in Western Europe. Deslock had a reputation for being a capable and aggressive commander, and he played a crucial role in the execution of Bodenplatt. His task was to ensure that the different Luftwaffe units worked together seamlessly and that the attack was carried out with maximum efficiency. On the ground, the German pilots who participated in Operation Bodenplatt were a mix of seasoned veterans and inexperienced recruits. By late 1944, the Luftwaffe was struggling with a severe shortage of experienced pilots due to high casualties sustained throughout the war. Many of the pilots who took part in Bodenplatt had undergone rush training programs and had limited combat experience. Despite these challenges, the Luftwaffe managed to assemble a formidable force for the operation. Around 1,035 aircraft were committed to the attack, including a variety of fighters such as the Messerschmitt Bf 109, Focke-Wulf FW 190, and some jet-powered aircraft like the Messerschmitt Me 262. These planes were tasked with striking at over a dozen Allied airfields in Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. The Allies, on the other hand, were led by a cadre of experienced and determined commanders. Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower oversaw the overall Allied strategy in Western Europe. Under his leadership, Air Marshal Sir Arthur Coningham of the Royal Air Force, RAF, and General Carl Spatz of the United States Army Air Forces, USAAF, were responsible for the air operations that would counter the German threat. Coningham and Spatz had successfully coordinated Allied air efforts throughout the Normandy invasion and subsequent campaigns. They had established a robust and flexible air defense system that could quickly respond to German attacks. The Allied air forces were equipped with a diverse array of aircraft, including Spitfires, Mustangs, Thunderbolts, and Typhoons, which provided both offensive and defensive capabilities. In preparation for the possibility of a German counterattack, the Allies had also improved their radar and early warning systems, making it more difficult for the Luftwaffe to achieve complete surprise. Additionally, Allied airfields were heavily defended by anti-aircraft artillery and fighter patrols, ready to intercept any incoming threats. With the stage set and the objectives clear, the Luftwaffe launched Operation Bodenplatt at dawn on January 1, 1945. The early morning sky was filled with the roar of German fighters as they streaked towards their targets. The fate of the operation, and the impact it would have on the final months of World War II, hung in the balance. The early morning hours saw over 1,035 German aircraft, primarily fighters, take to the skies. The plan was to strike with speed and precision, hitting multiple Allied airfields simultaneously to create maximum chaos and destruction. The operation targeted several key airfields. One of the primary targets was the Eindhoven airfield in the Netherlands, which housed a significant number of Allied planes. Another major target was the Ask airfield in Belgium, known for its robust anti-aircraft defenses and strategic importance. As the German planes approached their targets, they encountered a mix of favorable and challenging conditions. Some pilots faced poor weather and visibility issues, which led to navigational errors. These errors caused several German formations to miss their intended targets or arrive late, diminishing the overall effectiveness of the strike. Despite these challenges, the Luftwaffe managed to inflict significant damage at several airfields. At the Y-34 airfield near Ask, also known as Le Culet, German fighters strafed the runways, destroying numerous parked aircraft. 
The attack on Eindhoven was particularly devastating, with over 100 Allied aircraft destroyed or damaged on the ground. However, the Allies were not completely unprepared. Radar stations picked up the incoming German formations, and anti-aircraft defenses were quickly activated. At several airfields, ground crews and pilots scrambled to respond to the surprise attack. The ensuing chaos saw Allied fighters take to the skies to intercept the German planes, leading to fierce dogfights. One of the most notable engagements occurred at the Ask Airfield, where the 352nd Fighter Group of the USAAF was stationed. Known as the Blue-Nosed Bastards of Bodney, this unit had several experienced pilots who quickly launched their P-51 Mustangs to defend the airfield. The resulting air battle was intense, with both sides sustaining heavy losses. Meanwhile, at other locations such as Brussels and Metz, the story was similar. German fighters swooped in low, strafing runways and attacking parked aircraft. Allied anti-aircraft fire lit up the sky, creating a deadly crossfire that took a toll on the attacking planes. Despite the element of surprise, the Germans faced stiff resistance. As the morning progressed, the German planes began to withdraw, having expended their ammunition and fuel. The Luftwaffe's initial assessment of the operation was mixed. They had managed to destroy a considerable number of Allied aircraft on the ground, but the cost had been high. Navigational errors, poor weather, and the Allies' quick response had prevented a total victory. The aftermath of Operation Bodenplatt revealed the extent of the damage. The Allies lost about 465 aircraft, including fighters and bombers. However, the Luftwaffe's losses were even more severe. Nearly 300 German aircraft were destroyed, and around 200 pilots were killed, captured, or missing. Many of these pilots were experienced veterans whose loss was irreplaceable for the already stretched Luftwaffe. The operation had a profound impact on both sides. For the Germans, it was a tactical success, but a strategic disaster. The Luftwaffe's inability to achieve air superiority and the heavy losses sustained during Bodenplatt further weakened their already depleted forces. The operation failed to provide the intended relief to the German ground troops engaged in the Battle of the Bulge, which was already faltering. For the Allies, Operation Bodenplatt was a stark reminder of the Luftwaffe's remaining capabilities. However, it also demonstrated the resilience and readiness of Allied air and ground forces. Despite the surprise attack, the Allies quickly regrouped and continued their advance into Germany, undeterred by the temporary setback. The events of January 1, 1945, marked one of the last significant operations by the Luftwaffe in World War II. The failure of Bodenplatt underscored the declining fortunes of Nazi Germany and the inevitability of Allied victory. Amidst the chaos of Operation Bodenplatt, there were numerous stories of incredible bravery and heroism on both sides. These individual acts of courage highlighted the human element in what was a massive and complex military operation. One such hero was Flight Lieutenant Johnny Johnson of the Royal Air Force. Johnson was one of Britain's top fighter aces and had a significant impact during Bodenplatt. As soon as the alarm was raised about the incoming German attack, Johnson scrambled his Spitfire squadron and took to the skies. Despite the overwhelming numbers of the Luftwaffe, Johnson and his squadron engaged the enemy with tenacity and skill. His leadership and tactical acumen were crucial in repelling the German fighters and minimizing damage to Allied airfields. Another notable figure was Major George Preddy of the United States Army Air Forces. Preddy was one of the highest-scoring American aces of World War II. On the morning of January 1, 1945, Preddy led his unit into one of the fiercest dogfights of the operation. He shot down several German planes, demonstrating remarkable precision and bravery. Tragically, Preddy was killed later that day, underscoring the high stakes and deadly nature of these aerial battles. On the German side, there were also tales of daring and commitment. Oberleutnant Hans Eckhard Bob, a seasoned Luftwaffe pilot, flew multiple sorties during Bodenplatt. Despite facing intense anti-aircraft fire and aggressive Allied fighters, Bob managed to destroy several Allied aircraft on the ground. His actions, though ultimately part of a failing strategy, showcased the determination of German pilots to achieve their objectives. Tactics played a critical role in the unfolding of Operation Bodenplatt. The Luftwaffe's strategy relied heavily on speed, surprise, and precision. 
the Germans hoped to achieve complete surprise by attacking at dawn, a time when they believed the Allies would be least prepared. They also employed low-level flying tactics to avoid radar detection and maximize the element of surprise. This approach, known as ground hugging, involved flying at extremely low altitudes to stay under the radar and avoid anti aircraft fire. However, the execution of these tactics was hampered by several factors. Poor weather conditions and thick fog on the morning of the attack caused significant navigational challenges. Many German pilots struggled to find their targets, leading to delays and missed opportunities. Additionally, the coordination required for such a large scale operation proved difficult. Miscommunications and timing issues meant that some units arrived at their targets out of sync with the overall plan. Despite these setbacks, when the Luftwaffe did manage to hit their targets, the impact was devastating. The strafing runs on airfields like Eindhoven and Ask were executed with brutal efficiency. German fighters, armed with machine guns and cannons, swooped down on parked aircraft, hangars, and fuel depots, leaving a trail of destruction. The sight of burning aircraft and exploding ammunition created scenes of chaos and devastation on the ground. The Allies, though caught by surprise, quickly adapted their tactics to counter the German assault. Anti-aircraft guns were brought into action almost immediately, creating deadly flak fields that German pilots had to navigate. Allied pilots who were able to scramble their fighters engaged the German attackers in intense dogfights. These aerial duels were characterized by rapid maneuvers, sharp turns, and bursts of gunfire, with both sides demonstrating incredible skill and bravery. One of the key tactical responses by the Allies was the use of dispersed airfield layouts. By spreading out their aircraft and support facilities, the Allies minimized the damage that could be inflicted by concentrated attacks. This tactic, combined with rapid repairs and efficient ground crews, ensured that many airfields were able to return to operational status quickly, even after sustaining significant damage. The bravery and tactics displayed during Operation Bodenplatt had a lasting impact on the participants and the broader war effort. The operation highlighted the importance of air superiority and the critical role of air power in modern warfare. It also underscored the resilience and adaptability of Allied forces, who managed to thwart the German offensive despite the initial shock and heavy losses. The heroism and tactics we've discussed set the stage for understanding the full impact of this operation on the final months of World War II. Now, let's delve into the casualties and the broader impact of Operation Bodenplatt. This operation was a desperate gamble by the Luftwaffe, and its consequences were felt deeply on both sides. The operation resulted in significant losses for the Luftwaffe. Nearly 300 German aircraft were destroyed, and around 200 pilots were killed, captured, or went missing. Many of these pilots were experienced veterans, whose loss was irreplaceable for the already strained Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe was already suffering from a severe shortage of trained pilots due to the high attrition rates throughout the war, and Bodenplatt only exacerbated this issue. For the Allies, the losses were also substantial. They lost about 465 aircraft, including fighters and bombers, during the operation. However, their pilot casualties were considerably lower compared to the Germans, thanks to their well-coordinated response and effective airfield defenses. The Allies' ability to rapidly replace both pilots and aircraft mitigated the long-term impact of these losses. The immediate tactical impact of Operation Bodenplatt was mixed. On one hand, the Luftwaffe managed to inflict significant damage on several key Allied airfields, temporarily grounding many aircraft and disrupting operations. This provided a brief respite for German ground forces engaged in the Battle of the Bulge, as it reduced the number of Allied air sorties that could be launched against them. However, the strategic impact was disastrous for the Germans. The operation failed to achieve its primary objective of gaining air superiority. The Luftwaffe's losses in aircraft and, more importantly, experienced pilots, crippled their ability to conduct effective air operations in the subsequent months. This failure meant that the German ground forces continued to suffer from relentless Allied air attacks, which were critical in repelling the German offensive in the Ardennes. The Allied response to Bodenplatt showcased their resilience and efficiency. Despite the initial shock, anti-aircraft defenses were quickly activated, and many pilots managed to scramble their aircraft and engage the attackers. The dispersed layout of Allied airfields also minimized the overall damage. 
repairs were undertaken rapidly, and within days, most of the affected airfields were back to operational status. The long-term impact of Operation Bodenplatte on the Luftwaffe was profound. The loss of so many veteran pilots had a cascading effect on the effectiveness of German air operations. Training new pilots to the same level of proficiency was impossible within the short time frame remaining in the war. This depletion of experienced personnel weakened the Luftwaffe's ability to defend against the relentless Allied air offensives that followed. For the Allies, the operation served as a stark reminder of the importance of maintaining vigilance and preparedness, even when an enemy appears to be on the brink of collapse. It also reinforced the effectiveness of their air defense strategies and the importance of air superiority in modern warfare. The ability to quickly recover from the attacks and continue their advance into Germany demonstrated the robustness of Allied logistics and operational planning. In terms of the broader war effort, Operation Bodenplatte marked one of the last significant offensives by the Luftwaffe. The operation's failure further hastened the decline of German military power. By the spring of 1945, the Allies had achieved total air superiority over Europe, which played a crucial role in the final push into Germany and the eventual Allied victory. The legacy of Operation Bodenplatte is a testament to the desperation and determination of the Luftwaffe, as well as the resilience and tactical prowess of the Allied forces. It serves as a poignant reminder of the human cost of war and the critical importance of air power in modern military strategy. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this dive into Operation Bodenplatte. But before we go, we want to give a special thank you to all our listeners. Your support means the world to us. Absolutely. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to rate and subscribe to the History AI Podcast. A five-star review helps us reach more people and continue to grow. Please don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and family. And if you have any topic suggestions, feel free to reach out to us on social media. We're always looking for new ideas. Plus, we now have some awesome merchandise available. Check out the link in the show notes. Remember, every episode of the History AI podcast is evergreen, so you can listen anytime. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now. Discover the dark, enchanting world of Shadow Journeys, the tales of Jordan and Squishy. Follow Jordan, a seemingly innocent girl with a hidden power, and her loyal companion Squishy, who reincarnates into different animals after each battle. Venture into the ominous depths of the Whispering Woods as they face fierce creatures and uncover ancient secrets. Will Jordan succumb to the darkness within, or will she find the strength to forge a new destiny? Perfect for fans of dark fantasy and epic quests, this spellbinding tale will captivate and leave you pondering the fine line between hero and villain. Dive into Shadow Journeys today. Available on Amazon now.